Hello my lovelies, welcome to my channel. Here we are doing another spell for you guys. Now this has been highly requested as well as I am currently working for a client um, and I figured I'd kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> so here we are doing a spell. This is a very simplistic spell but it is extremely powerful. It has major potential specifically with the ingredients in combination with the powerful uh, chant that we use in this spell work. It is extremely powerful, like I said, um, and it's very easy to do. It has very easy ingredients. You probably possess these ingredients already. Uh, there is a little bit more than a few ingredients, but like I said, they're very simplistic and you probably have them already. So uh, without further ado, if you're looking for a spell that is going to help you not only cleanse yourself, but remove those blockages that we have so much difficulty overcoming, whether it's family issues, financial issues, whether it's health problems, whether it's um, just not being able to progress, not being able to move forward. It's like relationships, everything just seems to fall apart. This spell is for you. Now, you guys can see I have sage burning in the background. We've been doing this for quite a while as this candle is already charged and consecrated. Um, but I'm going to take you guys step by step and teach you how to do it. So let's get into it. Now, we're going to uh, go down the list of ingredients. Ideally, you would use sage or frankincense uh, to cleanse your space, to cleanse the uh, space where you're going to be working. This is very, very important, you guys. It is always crucial and important to ground yourself before doing any type of spell work, especially when we're talking about cleansings and removing any negative or nasty juju that we may be carrying. Yes, this spell is to remove and break hexes and remove uh, and break uh, bad juju that has been sent our way, whether it's on a conscious or subconscious level. What exactly do we mean when we talk about conscious or subconscious? Well, I'm sure you guys have came across people or been around a specific group of individuals where you feel like when they are no longer in your presence or when you're no longer around them, you feel like your energy is just completely gone downhill. Uh, you're drained of energy. You don't have a uh, clear mind. It's like fogginess in your mind. You're left feeling very tired. Those are what we call energetic vampires, people that are may not even be aware uh, that they have such heaviness of a negative energy. And this could come from multiple reasons. Uh, sometimes life, you know, beats us down and breaks us down to the point of feeling like we are unlucky, like uh, we have been cursed, like we're carrying a lot of, you know, a lot of tormented issues that we've gone through in life and we're still carrying on with that resentment, with that anger. It's kind of like when you meet people that you feel or even in the way they express themselves, they feel like they hate just the world. You know, they, they have such anger. Um, so again, they could be carrying that type of energy and not even be aware of it. So when they come in proximity with someone that is of light energy, uh, you're very positive, optimistic, uh, some even being empaths, this happens all the time. I see it all the time uh, where you're an empath and when you are no longer dealing with that person or they, you know, they leave or or you you're the one that leaves, whatever the situation is, you you're left feeling like you're just drained a heaviness, especially in your back area of your head or your neck. Um, it, it's very difficult to describe unless you've ever felt this. Um, this will, this is what we're talking about on a subconscious level when people are not aware that they're carrying that, that energy. Uh, now when we're talking about a conscious level, obviously it's people that send us bad juju, people that do spell work against us, um, people that are sending us just bad shit. Um, this will remove and not only that, but as you guys know, this is something I've always told you guys about. When we're doing spell work, when we're talking about magic, when we're talking about the metaphysical, um, the esoteric, you could never extinguish energy. You could never um, just, you know, make it non-existent. Um, 
So what this spell does, it will return it to sender. It will send it back to them. Uh, and it's through your will and through the power of your angels and archangels. So again, very powerful spell here. All right. So like I said, you're going to be needing some sage or some frankincense. You're also going to be needing something to inscribe the candle. Um, so for the candle, you can use any seven day candle this could be um like i said any kind of candle that will last you seven days this is a seven day ritual uh ideally we use uh these knot candles because with every knot it is a intention that we're putting for the seven days it is the return to sender it is to um transmutate uh, and re-energize and unlock whatever blockages that have been sent our way and will them back to its source okay so that's the reason why we're using this ideally you would use this candle if it's hard for you to come across that no worries just get yourself a black seven day candle then you're going to need a white piece of paper no lines uh, a black marker to write down specifically what i will be telling you to write down you're going to be needing some sea salt some rue uh you're going to be needing some five finger grass um Five finger grass it is extremely powerful and potent when we're talking about blessings when we're talking about um inviting positive energies into our lives not only on a uh conscious or and a subconscious level as well uh that is connected to our physical mental and spiritual sense so it feeds it helps feed our soul uh to restore it to its full potential we're also going to be using some rosemary obviously you guys know rosemary is very good uh to cleanse ourselves to uh, break any type of negative energy uh, and we're also going to be needing some dragon's ball uh, dragon's ball <laughs> sorry dragon's blood uh, resin now you don't need it doesn't have to be um, I mean I prefer it to be as as natural as possible Yes, uh, dragon's blood uh, resin can be a little bit expensive if it's really difficult for you to come across or to get your hands on some dragon's uh, blood uh, resin. Then what you're going to do is you can get dragon's blood incense, break it down in a pestle and a mortar. And what you're going to do is break it down into powder um, and you'll be able to use that quick witch tip. <laughs> All right. So. Um, you're also going to be needing some holy water. Now, if I know that a lot of the times when I post any spells that have to do with holy water, I get emails all the time uh, in regards to, you know, uh, because of what's going on with the pandemic, it's very difficult. Some churches or places of that carry holy water are closed. That's okay. If you don't have holy water, you can use consecrated ritualized water moon water you can use that as well and you can most definitely use thunderstorm water okay so if you don't know about that go ahead and go to my channel you'll be able to find um how to do those types of waters okay so without further ado let's get into it sorry for the long ass intro you guys but you guys already know i like to give you guys as much information as possible i'm not on here um to tell you uh, to do something without giving you the knowledge behind it of knowing and understanding the purpose behind the ingredients and why you're doing what you're doing. Uh, I think I do a disservice if I do what thousands of channels do. I, I'm not about that. I am about teaching and being able to guide you the best way possible, okay? Also, for those that have emailed me, contact me for readings, for spell work, we have not been responding um, for quite a bit, I want to say the past three months, we haven't been picking up any type of spell work, any type of clients cases, because we have been just extremely bombarded. Uh, thankfully, we are catching on. And for the, uh, I want to say the second week of February, we're going to be picking up cases. So I will be responding to all of you guys. I will be responding to emails. I know a lot of you guys message me through DMs, through Snapchats, um, through TikTok. Uh, you can find me on all those social medias. They are on my YouTube channel. Um, like I said, thank you guys so very much for your patience. We have just been trying to catch up to um, the, the consultations. Keep in mind that I do schedule ahead of time only because the uh, 
the seating or the slots are uh, very limited. I do book very quickly. We are now booking for, uh, like I said, the second week of February going into March and April already. So just letting you guys know. All right, enough of this long ass intro. Let's get into it. So what you're going to do is you're going to get the candle and you're going to inscribe at the very bottom down here. You're going to put your first name, last name and date of birth. Once you do that, we're going to go down every single knob, every single knot here, uh, and you're going to be putting return to sender, return to sender, return to sender, return to sender, and on each one. Now, if you're using a regular seven-day candle, what you can do is you can, if it's like in a glass, you can inscribe it at the circle, right? You're going to put return to sender. Um, and you're going to do it in a counterclockwise. Why? Because if it's in a glass, what you're doing is you want to set the intention of banishing it and sending it back to source. Um, so again, if you are using one of these candles, it's going to be returned to sender on each knob. Um, knob, sorry, on each knot. Uh, for those of you guys that are using the glass ones, like I said, counterclockwise at the very top, you're going to put return to sender. Okay. So then what we're going to do now is we're going to get a white piece of paper. We're going to be writing down. Um, you're going to put I, your first name, last name, date of birth. So you're going to put I, uh, Pinky Pink Star, born, and you're going to put your date of birth. Declare protection. Anything that tries to penetrate get gets instant rejection. Okay? So something like this. You're going to put I, your name, last name, born your date of birth declare protection anything that tries to penetrate gets instant rejection okay once you do that what you're going to do is you're going to get some of the holy water you're going to add a few drops on top of the paper you're going to and it's put in its essence you're going to put uh both your palms on the piece of paper and um Take a few, uh, a few deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth so you can ground yourself and put your intention and energy. Once you do this, you're going to fold it and you're going to fold it away from you, okay? So we're going to fold it like this. Once this is done, you're going to put it right at the center of your plate. Sorry, I forgot to tell you guys you're going to need a plate. Um, and you're also going to need a bit of water. So we're going to put the paper right at the center. I'm going to put this to the side because this is just for showing purposes. Okay, so once we're done with that, what we're going to do now is we're going to get the candle. And what you're going to do is you're going to rub the candle all over yourself. So you're going to pass it through all over your body. Okay, doesn't matter how you rub it. Doesn't matter if you go from head to toe, from toe to head. It doesn't matter. Uh, what it matters is to penetrate and put your energy into this, into the candle. So once that is done, you're also going to be putting some holy water on the candle uh, or consecrated or ritualized water or moon water, whatever water you're using. And you're going to bless it and prepare it. So putting your intention into it in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, I bless and consecrate this candle. I ask my spirit guides, my archangels to please step forward. My ancestors, please step forward and guide me in this work that is about to commence for the betterment of myself, my mind, my body, and my spirit. Once you're done with that, what you're going to do now is we're going to be getting, we're going to be getting some, we're going to be getting some sea salt and you're going to put it all around. You don't need very much of it, you guys. Okay. Once that is done, what you're going to do is you're going to pour some oil on this candle. So you can use any type of oil that is for cleansing. It could be rue oil. Um, it could be protection oil. It could be, um, if you're a female, you can use Cleopatra oil. If you're a male, you can uh, use John the Conqueror oil. This has already been prepared, like I said, for my clients, so we're ready to go. So once that is done, what you're going to do now is you're going to be getting some of the rue. Remember, every single time we use herbs, every time we're using any type of ingredient into the spell work, it is very crucial and important to set the intentions, right? Oftentimes, I see... Um, you know, clients telling me I use this, I use that, and it just didn't work out. Well, did you set the intentions? Herbs, 
are extremely powerful. If they weren't, we wouldn't use this in the practice, but you have to put uh, an enchantment on it. You are supposed to put your intention, what you're asking, the plants, the essence, the oils, everything that you're using is a combination of energies coming together to assist you in giving you the desired outcome. So it is important to tell them exactly what it is that you want you want them to do. All right, so we're going to be putting some rue around. And like I said, you do not need very much of it, um, only because this is just to purify the water that we're going to be inducing. So by the time the candle is completely extinguished, the water that is already purified, that has already been charged, that has already been um, enchanted for the sole protection of you, the cleansing and removal, um, ha it will the water will extinguish whatever remains of that candle. Um, so again, it is for cleansing purposes. Okay, so once we're done with that, what we're going to do now is we're going to be adding some of the some of the rosemary here. And we're going to go around. Once we're done with that, what we're going to do here is we're going to be adding some of the five finger grass. Now, if it is difficult for you to find the five finger grass, then this spell is not for you because this is primarily one of the most important ingredients in this spell work. Um, there is plenty of videos on my channel for cleansings, for removing or breaking of hexes, uh, just depending on how advanced you are in spell work. Um, I try to make them as simplistic as possible for all of you guys to be able to do. Um, but I understand that depending on what part of the world you're in, sometimes ingredients can be difficult to obtain. Um, so just putting that out there. Okay, so once we're done with that, what we're going to do now is we're going to be getting the dragon's blood um, resin. Like I said, if you don't have resin, you can just get incense sticks, break them down, put them in the mortar, and pretty much make it into powder. As you guys can see here, we already did that. So what we're going to do is we're going to be... We're going to be using some of the powder for the bowl. And as well, whoa, for the candle. Okay. Oh my God, you guys. I am, I don't know if it's because I'm extremely controlling, <laughs> probably, but I love dragon's blood. It is, it's just, oh my goodness. I can't even, it's like a turn on. I cannot. Anyways, let's <laughs> get into this. Okay. So once you are done with that, what we're going to do is activate it. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, I bless and consecrate these ingredients, these herbs, the five finger grass, the dragon's blood, the sea salt, the rosemary, the rue, to become in combination in perfect harmony, to be able to bring to me the rendered results. I ask my spirit guides, my archangels, to be please be present. My ancestors, please assist me in the removal of this um, blockages of these difficulties that I'm currently going through, that my client is currently going through. My client by the name of... Okay, so once we're done with that, you're pretty much set to go. What we're going to do now is we're going to be adding some water here. You don't need very much water. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, activate it by uh, chanting or doing our chant over the work that has already been done. Um, quick note, when the wax completely melts, if you are the type of person that likes to read your candles, um, when the wax is completely extinguished, uh, sorry, the candle, when the candle is ex uh, 
completely extinguish. The melted wax will align with its herbs and they will show you. Um, either you will see figures, you will see um, just imagery. If you take your time and really learn to still your mind, they will show you, okay? They will show you. Um, oftentimes, if you see like just ripples of waves or uh, a, a bunch of wax in a specific, depending on where it's at, that's the that's the blockage or, or the what has been removed. So again, um, depending on how advanced you are, you'll be able to interpret the burning of the candle, okay? All right, so once we're done with that, this is what we're going to do. You're going to place both your hands over the candle and over the bowl. And you're going to say, and you have to do this with intention, you guys. So when I say intention, I don't just mean like know what you're doing. I mean, say it with power, okay? If you're scared, if you scare easily, meaning if you're kind of like, I don't know if I want to do this, then don't do it. That's simple, okay? Um, why? Because let's just say, right, let's just imagine that you're unaware that someone has done candle magic on you. More often than not, people that work us have a tendency of being very, very close to us. What do I mean by that? It usually doesn't come from an enemy from afar. So if you're scared of seeing consequences that they're going to have to be dealing with, do not do this. Plain and simple. Because you cannot have remorse for those that have sent whatever shit they have sent to you. Okay? You got to own this work. All right? So if you start to see things unravel, you start to see certain people that you probably deal with, you start to see that their life is going to shit, you cannot hesitate or feel sorry for them. You are not in your heart know that you're at peace because you're not doing anything that is affecting your karma. You are only sending it back to source, meaning if they would not have petition, asked, worked, or send something towards you, they wouldn't have to be dealing with this shit. Okay? I hope I made myself clear. Okay. So you're going to put both your hands over the bow and candle and you're going to say it with power. Protection, protection. I declare protection against all entities who are against my perfection. Any hiding within, you are now rejected. Any energy in the wrong, you are now corrected. Protection, protection. I declare protection. I call upon the powers of my heavenly sanctions I declare myself cloaked to be unseen by the unseen. I declare myself safe from the unclean. I declare a shield around me that cannot be penetrated by anything or anyone. Protection, protection, I declare protection. Anything that tries to penetrate get, gets instant rejection. I declare deflect and send back to its source, quadruple its dose of its infection protection protection i declare protection it is so because of my i am blessed be okay so i will say it again i will probably put it in the description box because i know a lot of you guys asked for that but it is extremely powerful just um Doing that chant, I can already feel my guide stepping forward. <laughs> okay. So like I said, you have to do this prayer. It is a powerful prayer. But you cannot be fearful and you cannot be scared. Okay? That is the key to this spell work. Um, when we speak about cloaking... Um, if you guys don't know what that is, comment below. I will make a video explaining that. But anyways, oftentimes people go to tarot readers like myself or they go to other people and try to get information about you, your life, your family, etc., etc. When you cloak yourself or when you cloak your family, it's difficult for them to be able to pick up on that. So that's what is induced in this chant, okay? So again, like I said, you're going to say protection, protection. I declare protection against all entities who are against my perfection. Any hiding within, you are now rejected. Any energy in the wrong, you are now corrected. Protection, protection, I declare protection. I call upon the powers of my heavenly sanctions. I declare myself cloaked 
to be unseen by the unseen. I declare myself safe from unclean. I declare a shield around me that cannot be penetrated by anything or anyone. Protection, protection, I declare protection. Anything that tries to penetrate gets instant rejection. I declare deflect back to its source, quadruple its dose of its infection. Protection, protection, I declare protection. And it is so because of my I am present, sorry, because I am present, bless be. And so it is, okay? Once you do that, you're going to light the candle. Now you're going to burn the first knot. And every single day when you light it, you must chant this chant and let a knot burn. It's a seven-day knot candle. So it's going to be for seven days. Every day, one knot is going to burn. Do not let it get past that. It is important for you to be around this candle when it's burning, okay? Now, if you're doing a seven-day candle that is not a uh, knotted candle, um, what you're going to do is basically you can kind of see it's about, mm, I would say, an inch, an inch and a half. Uh, you're going to let it burn every day until the seventh day. As an example, if you can't really figure it out, um, just make sure that on the seventh day you let it extinguish completely. You let it burn out completely. All right, my lovelies, I hope that this gives you guys um, the guidance that you need, the push that you need to move forward, uh, removing any bad juju that you may be carrying, whether you're aware of it or not. Uh, may it bring to you blessings. May blessings be bestowed upon you and yours. I love you guys very much, and we'll see each other soon. If you do this, definitely comment below. Let me know your experience so that others can see that as well. I love you guys, and we'll see each other soon. Bye.